conservative new media viewers, Jeremy Lin fans around the world, Charlotte Hornets fans around the world. What's up? It's me, PFA Paul F. Villarreal, the NBA expert. We're here to discuss Charlotte's 114 to 100 victory tonight over the Boston Celtics in Boston, Massachusetts. Charlotte improves to 47 and 34 on the season with the win and the Boston falls to the exact same record with the loss. Boston has the tiebreaker which means that as we speak right now Charlotte is in sixth place for the playoff standings and Boston is in fifth place. Both Atlanta and Miami I think have 33 losses each so they're ahead in the number three seed and the number four seed. Unfortunately for Charlotte, the loss that they had yesterday to Washington in Washington really, really hurt them badly. Uh, I think if they could have won that game, you go into tonight's game, you can flip-flop with Boston, get to number five. Maybe Miami or Atlanta lose another game, particularly Miami, maybe even end up with home court. That looks less likely now. Still, Tonight was an important game. The team needed to get its kind of just get some winning back. They've been losing quite a uh, a number of games recently. So tonight was a big game against a team that I think that they were 0 and 2 against this year. Okay? Also, let me say before we talk about this game that one people have been talking to me and I know about this Jeremy Lin too flagrant to call video. I have not gotten a chance to see the video, but I know what it's about. I know some of the plays that are in it, like the the Carmelo Anthony uh, elbow to the face, I think it does, of Jeremy Lin. I think it's great. Uh, I'm glad that people took the chance and took the time to be able to do it. Um, I know that it, it was addressed to, I believe, the NBA commissioner. And look, if it can help out, fantastic. I, I have no idea. I'm not... I don't know what effect it's going to have, but at least it makes people more aware of the situation. And I think that's definitely a good thing. So I, I people have tweeted it to me. Uh, I just haven't had a chance to, to watch it, but I, I think it's great that people took the time and the opportunity to be able to make it. Okay. And finally, yes, I'm back tonight. This is game number 81 tonight. I have not made a video since game number 71. And if you do not follow us on Twitter, you probably have no idea what's going on, although I think I've mentioned it some in the videos. I just, I don't know, I had some weird health thing where, like, both of my feet, like, blew up like balloons, particularly one of them. And I had to do all this health testing and blood work and all this stuff. Essentially, they told me that they think it's psoriatic arthritis or gout. So I've just been like out of the mix for, I don't know, six weeks or whatever. And it seems like every now and then this just happens to me. If you've been listening to these videos for years, you'll, you'll know what I'm talking about. But um, uh, still recovering, but definitely wanted to make a video for tonight. I certainly intend to be here once the playoff starts, which is only one game away, game number 82, and then we go right into the playoffs. After Jeremy's performance in this game, we thought it was definitely worthwhile to make a video and just kind of get back into it again. So here I am. Thanks for all the well wishes. I've received many tweets and and emails and all kinds of stuff from people with suggestions and and, uh, advice and everything. And uh, thanks to everybody. I'm doing okay. I'm still here. I feel pretty good. So let's talk about what happened in this game. What happened in this game was that Jeremy Lin went nuclear in the second quarter. He went crazy in the second quarter. How crazy is crazy? Crazy is 19 points and four steals in the second quarter. And I he just went berserk. And Charlotte outscored Boston in that quarter. 39 to 13 so they outscored them by 26 points which is 12 points greater than what the margin of this game is so basically the game was won in the second quarter 
and it was primarily won because Jeremy Lin like went from level one to about level one thousand, and he just kind of willed it to happen, and he just just took over. It was unreal. If you have the opportunity to watch this game, you definitely want to watch it. I'm sure the highlight people, and I know there are people doing good work this year. I'm sure they'll have almost all the plays. Like I said, you definitely, I mean, look, Jeremy was good the whole game, but he was incredible in the second quarter. I said on Twitter it might have been the best half he's ever played, including Lynn Sanity. Maybe. It certainly was the best quarter he's ever played in his career as a professional. He was pretty tired in the second half. That's because he went just all out in the second quarter. Okay, let's go over the statistics quickly. Boston had one, two, three, four, six players in double-figure scoring, led by Avery Bradley and Isaiah Thomas. They're starting backcourt, 17 points apiece. The Hornets had three players besides Jeremy Lin that scored in double figures tonight. Kemba Walker, 18 points, five rebounds, six assists. Al Jefferson, 16 points, 11 rebounds. Marvin Williams, 16 points. Jeremy Lin. 25 points, 7 rebounds, 5 assists. Jeremy played a game-high 39 minutes, shot 7 of 14 from the field, including 1 of 6 from 3-point range, 10 for 10 from the free-throw line, 5 steals, 1 block shot, 1 turnover, 4 personal fouls. Jeremy's plus-minus was a plus-8. It was amazing just to watch this game, and we'll go over some of the quarter by quarter, at least in the second quarter, and a little bit later, too, because something happened with Jeremy getting fouled that I wanted to mention, particularly in light of the, the, the two flagrant video. Jeremy's plus minus after the first quarter was minus 10, and then after the, fir- after the second quarter it was plus 26 <laughs> or something like that, you know, and or I don't something like that, so around there. And then um, plus 16 maybe is correct, and ended up plus 8 because he was on the court when Boston made a run uh, early in the fourth quarter, but it was like it's like a, a zigzag watching his plus minus throughout this game. Now, what did Jeremy do? Let's Let's go over quarter by quarter. Let's talk about it. The reason why Charlotte won this game is why I said, which is the second quarter, they just took over. And it was absolutely led by Jeremy Lin. There's no question about that. Other guys were making plays too, but Jeremy was the catalyst. He was the the, the rocket engine powering everything that happened. Okay. At the end of one quarter, the score was 28 to 24 for Boston. Jeremy had come into the game with four minutes and 40 seconds left in that first quarter. At that point in time, Charlotte was leading 18 to 12. Okay. Then he had a he had a nice play where he forced a turnover against Isaiah Thomas. I mentioned this on Twitter. Isaiah Thomas drove beside Jeremy and then he stopped. And then he started to drive again, which you can't do. You're not allowed to stop dribbling and then start again. That is called a double dribble, meaning you dribble twice, which you're only allowed to dribble once. That was a nice play by Jeremy. Then he missed a three point shot. Had a couple of unconverted assist opportunities uh, on nice passes by Jeremy. Then he hit a nice little shot uh, about 18 feet away from, like, kind of the left part of the top of the arc. And I noticed that Jeremy was playing against Evan Turner at small forward. That's what it looked like. It might have been shooting guard, but I, I think that they were both playing small forward at that point. Now let's take it into the second quarter. Now, at this point, Jeremy was still going against Evan Turner. However, both of them, I think, were playing shooting guard now. Or actually, they might have been both playing point guard. I think it was Jeremy. Yeah, it was Jeremy, Troy Daniels, and Courtney Lee, which meant that Jeremy was playing point guard, and so was Evan. Uh, uh, I think it was Evan Turner, Marcus Smart, and Jay Crowder. That was the backcourt or the first the point guard, shooting guard, small forward for the Celtics. So that was Jeremy's assignment at this point in time, was to deal with Evan Turner. Evan's bigger than Jeremy is. He's a good player, not a great player, but he's good, he's capable, uh, he's taller than Jeremy is, and Jeremy did a nice job against him. 
So here we are early in the second. Again, this is going to be Jeremy's takeover quarter. He, Jeremy drove into he drove into the lane. He was basically one on one against Kelly Alinek. He went right into his chest, spun around on him, and then shot right over him. And you could see that the the bench was extremely pleased with that play by Jeremy. That was his second score of the game. So Jeremy came into the second quarter with two points. I think he, let me let me look quickly. Two points, no rebounds, no assist, and then he was going to blow apart the second quarter so this was the second score of the game and i said this on twitter that one of the things you often hear when you watch nba games you'll hear like analyst the television analyst or the radio analyst say this is they'll tell you that you should go right at a shot blocker and now kelly Olenek honestly is not a shot blocker but he's tall he's like seven foot tall so for for somebody of Jeremy Lin's height, Alinek is a shot blocker because of his height. What you want to do is you drive you drive right into that person because when you are right on them, like right in their chest, they can't jump. They can't move to block your shot as well as if you give them distance between you and them, then they can jump, then they can time you, then they can block your shot. So I thought it was a really good decision by Jeremy, and uh, he completed the play well. As I said, the bench, you could see, was very happy and all up and jumping at the play. Then Jeremy drew his first foul of the game. This was a really intelligent play. I think it was Marcus Smart. Jeremy received the ball on about 45 degrees right of the top of the arc with like three seconds left on the shot clock. He had to do something, so what he did was he pump faked up, Marcus Smart jumped, and Jeremy basically jumped into him, which meant free throws. Jeremy got got the two free throws, made them both. That made the score 38-34 to for Boston, so it's still a four-point lead, which I think is what it was coming into the corner. I then made a note that says Frank Kaminsky doing good work in the low post. Frank if you follow the team at the start of this year, Steve Clifford mentioned that Frank had to get stronger. He needed to get into the weight room and start working out more. Well, he's been doing that. And I think if you look at Frank up close, you could see he's he's bulkier than he was. And he definitely looks stronger. And it's showing up in his moves. Like now he can actually stand in the low post and kind of make moves where at the start of the year he was too weak to do it. It's something that he was able to do against college players, but he couldn't do against professional players that are bigger and stronger. So now it's, it's starting to pay off. You're really starting to see once he gets even stronger, he's, I mean, he's, he's going to be a really nice professional player. I, I've said that before, and I, I think he'll even stronger about that now watching him recently and as he, his body has gotten bigger and stronger. Then Jeremy had his third score of the game. This was in the middle of the second quarter. This was a really nice play where Charlotte whipped the ball around. I think it went from Kemba to Nick Batum over to Jeremy, and Jeremy hopped into, jumped into a three-point attempt from about five degrees left of the top of the arc. Just was in perfect rhythm, caught it, drilled it, that made the score 39-38 to 38 for Charlotte. So Charlotte takes the lead here. Jeremy already had five points in the quarter. Then he got, I think, his, his first steal of the game. or Yeah, he got his first steal of the game. Uh, I, I don't remember what it was. Then he was fouled once again going to the basket. Two shots there. Uh, made both of the free throws. Then I put... Lynn is rolling. So Lynn's starting to get on a roll here. And now Eric Collins, who is the Hornets announcer, started like he was all ready to talk about Jeremy Lynn and Harvard because, of course, the game was taking place in Boston and Jeremy went to Harvard, which is in Boston. And now Eric, <laughs> Eric Collins was saying stuff like, you know, Jeremy's coming back home to Harvard. I, th- I wonder if he went to a poetry reading last night or maybe he went and split an atom somewhere. <laughs> You know, so he was just bringing out all the Harvard jokes and, you know, the smart kids jokes and all this type of thing. 
He then also mentioned what Jeremy's GPA was at Harvard, which was a 3.2, which I'll be happy to say because that's a good GPA. Uh, so that was that was interesting. But Eric Collins had already said a, a few other Harvard jokes before this time. Then Jeremy had his fourth score of the game. He, Frank Kaminsky got a rebound on defense, passed it ahead of Jeremy, and Jeremy just came right down the court and stepped right into it like a 20-foot shot and just drilled it. Now I put Linsanity roll, Boston timeout, 43-38 to for Charlotte at that time. Jeremy had 13 points in the game, which meant he had 11 points in the quarter, and now they were they were just starting to take over, and everything was gravitating around Jeremy. Jeremy just got it in his head. I'm going to go super energy in this quarter, and that's exactly what he did, and uh, it was fantastic to see. Soon after the timeout, Jeremy went right back to the basket, got a little layup. That made the at a 13 to nothing run for Charlotte at this point in the game. So they were just rolling over Boston. Jeremy had 15 points himself. Score was 45 to 38 for Charlotte. Then Jeremy went back to the basket once again, fouled on the drive, made both free throws, 47 to 39. Then he had an unconverted assist opportunity to Nick Batum. He passed the ball to Nick for a three pointer, which did not go in. Then he had a nice pass ahead to Kemba Walker, who was fouled in a clear path foul, meaning that nobody was ahead of Kemba, which basically means you get two free throws and possession of the ball. Uh, and that was a nice play by Jeremy. It was a nice play by Kemba to, to get in position for that. Then he was fouled. He, he basically ran right into Avery Bradley, essentially. Avery Bradley, at this point in time, this is still the middle of the quarter. This is all this is happening essentially in the middle of the quarter between eight minutes left and four minutes left in the second quarter. Avery Bradley had three fouls on him, and he also was the leading scorer for Boston at this point in time. He had uh, 11 points. And so what Boston's coach, Brad Stevens, wanted to get Avery Bradley out of the game so he didn't get another foul. And so one of the Boston guys was standing over at the scorer's table waiting to come in. Jeremy knew it, and basically he ran into Avery Bradley to see if he could get another foul called him, and they called a foul. And so that was – he gets the fourth foul on Boston's leading score, and he gets two more free throws for himself, made both of them. So the roll continues here. Then he gets another steal, passes the ball ahead to Kemba Walker, And the roll just continues. We're now moving on into late in the second. 54 to 39 for Charlotte. Timeout again for Boston. And I just put all from Lynn Roll, inspiring team. He's just completely taken over the game at this point. (laughs) And there's like nothing anybody can do about it. It's just like I said, look, I've watched Jeremy since 2011, 2012 season, since the New York season. This was unreal. It was incredible. He just, he's capable of doing this. We know it. We've seen it before. Anybody that's watched him, particularly Journal Insanity. But it's, I don't know. He just, he just decided it was going to happen and he just started making plays and it just kept happening. It was, it was really, like I said, I, I certainly encourage everybody that's a Jeremy Lin fan to try to get a hold of of the second quarter of this game, or I don't know, get somebody to put it up on YouTube or something like that. You know, of course we're not, we want everything to be legal and by the books, maybe just, I don't know, you share it for a while and then take it down. It was just amazing. It was incredible. <laughs> that what, what happened in the second quarter and what Jeremy did. Okay. Then during the timeout, you could hear Steve Clifford say that they wanted to get the ball to Jeremy. I saw him like diagramming a play, and he said something like, "Yeah, Jeremy's over here, or, or swing it to Jeremy, or something like that." They came out of the timeout. Kemba tried to pass the ball to Jeremy, but it went out of bounds, so it's just like a turnover. But definitely, they were trying to go to Jeremy as much as they could right now. Um, I then noted that Charlotte had five steals in the quarter, and Jeremy had four of them. 
Then the announcer said that Jeremy had played 15 consecutive minutes, which was he had. He was actually going to end up playing about 17 consecutive minutes because he didn't come out in the second quarter at all. Also, they noted on the broadcast at this period of time, Charlotte was in the midst of a 24-1 to run against Boston. So it was basically like super crazy insanity roll run and Boston did nothing. I mean, that's, that's basically what happened right there. Okay. Then Jeremy missed his second shot of the game. He was a little bit short on a catch and shoot three point attempt from about 40 degrees left of the top of the arc. He did not have any, he did not jump into the shot and it was a little bit short. So he didn't get his legs into it quite enough. Then Boston finally scored. Then Jeremy had his one and only blocked shot of the game. He blocked Evan Turner driving to the basket evan was uh jeremy basically came behind evan evan didn't see him and he timed it and he blocked the shot it was really nice he then saved the ball from going out of bounds did jeremy and then he got fouled soon after that and at that point the hornets announcer said it's like there's eight jeremy lens on the court and the analyst said, this is a lot of fun to watch. This is pretty pretty fun to watch Jeremy Lin flying around like this. And and that's exactly what he was doing. As we headed into halftime, 63-41 to 41 for Charlotte. So the four-point deficit or whatever it was was now a 22-point lead. Jeremy Lin had 21 points, four rebounds, one assist, and four steals as well as one block shot. So again, in one quarter, he had 19 points, four steals, one block shot in 12 minutes, and just was everywhere doing everything. He then was interviewed as he was heading into halftime, and he said he was just trying to play hard. And he also mentioned that he was disappointed with how he played yesterday. As I mentioned, that was a tough loss for them yesterday. Now, I will say this. The game that was played yesterday against the Washington Wizards was played at 12 p.m. Eastern time. Guys are not used to playing that early, and so it messes with your biological clock. They're used to playing at like 7 o'clock. Now, I'm not making excuses here because Washington played also, but the team looked off, and that might have been why. But what I, I like was that Jeremy's taking responsibility here. He's owning up to it and saying, you know what? Yep, I didn't give the team what they needed yesterday, so I'm going to try to do it today. That's basically what he was saying, and that's what he said. And uh, uh, just that's great leadership, excellent role model stuff, and we're just really happy for that. Oh, and I forgot the woo, so let's do that. Now, The rest of the game was not nearly as dramatic for Jeremy Lin, but he still played really well. He had 21 points coming out into into halftime. By the end of the third quarter, he had 25 points. He scored on two layups, I believe. He also had to come in early in the third quarter because Nick Batum hurt his ankle. So Jeremy had to come in in the third quarter with like 11 and a half minutes left, which is not something you would usually see uh, done. Also in the third quarter, Jeremy drove to the basket late in the quarter, and it looked like he got hit, and he went down on the ground. Apparently, they called Jeremy for a charge, an offensive foul, and, and, and a turnover. It, I was listening with the sound down at that point. It looked like definitely a foul on the defense, you could see Jeremy on the ground laughing about it. Like, what in the world? How can you call the foul on me? And Steve Clifford, they showed Steve Clifford, and Steve Clifford had a couple of things to say that I can't repeat in this family broadcast, but he was very unhappy. And then soon after that offensive foul took place, a timeout came on the floor, and you could see Steve Clifford talking the referee like, What's going on? What happened on that call? You know, he was not happy, and I was really ha- it was really good to see him standing up for Jeremy 
particularly as we mentioned earlier in light of this too flagrant not to call video that's been going around so um good look jeremy got 10 free throws tonight that's that's a lot so I, i'm fortunate that he did get at least some of the calls tonight even though he may not have gotten as many as he might have deserved to get. Okay, heading into the fourth, Jeremy played almost the entire second half of this game. He came in with 11 and a half minutes in the third quarter. He played all of the rest of the third quarter, and he played all of the fourth quarter until like a minute left or 30 seconds left, and that's when the game was just over and basically... Clifford was taking guys out because it was time to put in the bench because the game had concluded. Look, it just uh, just a yeah, he had his fifth steal there in the fourth quarter. Evan Turner tried to post him up, and Jeremy just kind of reached around him and poked the ball when Evan was trying to do a post up move. That was a very nice play. After the game, Jeremy was named the player of the game. He did an interview. And he said that he was just trying to be aggressive. He said he didn't have as much energy left in the second half because he had played so hard in that second quarter. He also said that when he gets into a rhythm, he can make a lot of plays, good plays consecutively. That's why he was talking about the second quarter there. He thanked God for the performance. He also said that the Hornets know what they're capable of as a team. They just need to put out the level of energy necessary to achieve that in in stretches through multiple games. So you could see he was still disappointed about, I'm sure the team was disappointed about the loss yesterday uh, to Washington and also disappointed about recent losses, the loss to Cleveland and the loss at Toronto. So basically they lost like three of their last four or five games, and that's not the way you want to be heading into the playoffs you want to be winning so look losing at cleveland losing at toronto those are kind of expected because those are the top two teams in the conference and they both had something to play for the loss at washington was the bad loss that was the loss that really hurt and i think that steve clifford and and the team just kind of like they they needed a spark they needed something and that's what Jeremy Lin was able to deliver today. And it just I'm thrilled for him. I'm thrilled for the team. Great win. And like I said, let's keep on rolling. Yeah, they might be stuck in the number six seed, depending on what happens with Boston in their final game. Other than you never know. They could end up at number five. But that final regular season game for the Hornets will take place two days from now, Wednesday, April 13th. It is against the Orlando Magic, who are eliminated from playoff contention. This means they have very little to play for. That game will take place in Charlotte, North Carolina at 8 p.m. Eastern time. I don't know if I'll be covering it or not. Probably. Uh, like I said, though, I will be. I intend to be on hand for the playoffs, regardless of whatever happens in game number 82. Though I'll probably try to do it also if I can. Um let me just say this. Um, I think I just want to say this in advance. I'm not sure of this yet, but it looks like between now and next season, my living circumstances are going to change. And because of that, depending on where I'm at, it, there's a, a, a very real chance that I'm going to have to do the, the videos the day after the games just because I might not be able to make noise and stuff like this late at night to do it. So I just want to give you guys a heads up on that now. Uh, of course, we'll talk more about it as we get closer to next season and everything, but um, uh, that's something that I think is probably going to happen. So hopefully um, you can wait whatever, eight or ten hours to be able to watch the videos and, and you'll still enjoy them. But uh, I've, something I'm anticipating that's going to take place. Okay, great win, fantastic performance from Jeremy. This is... He did not have a great game yesterday, so it's just great to see him kind of reverse that tonight. And uh, excellent. Glad to be back here making the videos. Definitely looking forward to the playoffs. Look, if Charlotte gets the number six seed, there's a very good chance they're going to be playing the Atlanta Hawks. 
I think I have to look at the standings again, but I think that's correct, although I'm not sure who has the tiebreaker between Miami and Atlanta. Atlanta's good. Miami's good, too, although they're missing Chris Bosh, but they're playing well. Atlanta, that's going to be a tough series if Charlotte gets them, but we'll we'll deal with that later. Uh, I'm not saying Charlotte can't win it because they can. If they play the way they play tonight, they can beat anybody, anybody. So uh, we'll, we'll deal with that after the next game. But for tonight, that's it. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Your comments below. Thanks to Gary Chen of the Jeremy Only Lynn Garden Fan Group. You can find out more about Jer- about Gary and about the Jeremy Only Lynn Garden if you follow information for them in the video description below the video player. Also in the video description, information so you can check out highlights of this game. Finally there, you can find info so you can come and join the Conservative New Media Facebook group and how you can come and follow us on Twitter as well. I try to tweet out when I can during the games. I was able to do that tonight, so that's a lot of fun. We like to interact with people there and hear what everybody else is thinking while they're watching the game also. Once again, I am PFE Paul F. Villarreal, the returning NBA expert. Thanks a lot for watching Conservative New Media. We strive to be the number one Jeremy Lin YouTube fan channel. Great stuff tonight. Jeremy was just totally a machine in the second quarter. I really hope you guys can watch it for yourselves because it's worth watching, and it was just its just a great display of what he's capable of doing in the league as a player, just how good and how impactful he really can be given the circumstances. And I want to say this, too. It's excellent to see how supportive of him his teammates are and his coaches are. After he came out in the fourth quarter, you could see all the assistant coaches were making sure to, like, you know, slap his hand and everything. This coaching staff, whether you think or agree with them on everything or not, they they really support Jeremy. I think Jeremy really likes them a lot. So we'll, we'll see what happens in the off season in terms of his possible free agency. But uh, I think this has just been a great year for him and just to get over the last three years of, of stuff that he's had to go through. Okay, that is it. I hope you're having a great night or great day wherever you are around the world when you watch this video. Take care. We'll talk to you again soon. I want to say a special shout out to Melody Ting. Melody, I hope your family and yourself are doing better. I know you've been going through some things recently and uh, thinking about you and saying prayers for you. And certainly I wish the best for everybody else too, but um, there's just something was going on my, on my mind with that, with Melody. So I wanted to say it. Okay, take care. Talk to you again soon. Hopefully we'll see you again in two days from now as Charlotte takes on the Orlando Magic from Charlotte, North Carolina.